Good evening. Good evening. Happy Advent. It's our second week in Advent. In this side hallway over here, if you have kids in Sunday school, there's uh, the education department has a, uh, what do we call them? They're uh, Advent bags. And so we want those to get picked up by any of the families that might have students in Sunday school. Um, also, I think the 22nd or is it the 21st when we have to have poinsettias turned in for 22nd, right? 22nd, all right. There's a lot of stuff going on today. We had a wedding here, so you're in the midst. We, it was for Kate Shaw and Kyle Gall. Um, turned out really well. Um, and uh, had a funeral for Mike, Mark Eide earlier in the week. So uh, we're trying to keep safe and do the right kinds of things. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure, whose steadfast love and it endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Take this moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. <clears throat> Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive to sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us in each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with our grace, that we may welcome others to have you as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat>
The first reading comes from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the desert, in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass, and their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O, o Zion, herald of good tidings, lift your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, with his arms rules for him his reward is with him his recompense before him he will feed his flock like a shepherd he will gather his lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep the word of the lord thanks be to god we'll read together responsibly psalm 85 you have been gracious to, to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. The second reading comes from 2 Peter, the third chapter. <clears throat> but do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with God one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. <clears throat> the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slow, slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of people ought you be leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening to the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also your beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel.
This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Please have a seat. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, and the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. I think about this text in particular a few years back when Sue and I with a whole group of people went to Israel and we went to two, two different spots where they might have thought Jesus was baptized. The first spot we went to, truly I wouldn't have thought, I said this is too uh, pristine. It's not what I would expect. And actually they said they're pretty sure that's not where Jesus was baptized. But the second place we went to where you could cross the river and be in the in the uh, in Jordan, that was the place. It was m muddy water, really quite disgusting. Away from anything, hot, very very hot, and it was a way for us to at least see, maybe try to feel where Jesus was coming from, where John the Baptist actually did the baptizing. It wasn't in a clean part of the water. I think about um, the text we have before us, because next week we go right to John. So we have, we're right in the first and the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. And, it, and it's, a, it's pr simple, straightforward, a reminder to us that no matter how it goes in our lives, there are always beginnings. Always. There's beginnings, if you think about it, in uh, response to uh, a wedding, which we had today, a, a family brought together in Christ, married, a new beginning. Oftentimes, um, you'll find that the new beginning happens in baptism, right? In the waters. It's not like it's special water. But a reminder that what happened for us in our baptism when we were young continues to happen for others. A reminder that every time we gather together, we soak in that beginning. We also soak in the end. We die and live in Christ in the, these baptismal waters. I think during this time, most of us would rather be done and over with with COVID and, and, and having three funerals in the last week and a half with members that have died of COVID. It gets a little bit old. And yet the call is, as the body of Christ, to, uh, to take into account all the times that God comes to us with new beginnings. That God shows up in our very lives with new beginnings. The first word in the Gospel of Mark is archaea. It's a Greek word, and it means beginning. It, it doesn't even have a the before it. It just says beginning. And then, you, because we have English, we say the beginning of the good news. Jesus Christ, Son of God. So here we are, second week in Advent, in a new beginning once again brought together in Christ in a new beginning to know that Jesus Christ is ever present with us. And we have John the Baptist 
out in the wilderness, out in the wilderness. And people in Jerusalem were going to John the Baptist. And it wasn't like they had fast food places all over the place. If you left the city of Jerusalem and wandered out into the wilderness, you were putting yourself in harm's way. So what was causing people to want to go to John the Baptist? Why did they leave the comfort and security of living in the city? It begs you to wonder, like, what was going on? That they would go out of their way to put themselves in harm's way to go and say, we have not been what we've been called to do. So they wander out into the wilderness. And John baptizes, people repent, but then he starts talking about the one who is more powerful than him, the one that he's not even able to reach down and untie his sandals, this Jesus. And even though you don't really have Jesus in this picture, we know that Jesus is coming. And he understood wilderness better than anyone. Jesus understood the wilderness, and he knew it was going to happen, and we'll find that out in the coming weeks. And yet, my call to you is to pay attention to your own wilderness. You know, the wilderness in, in your heart, the wilderness between the two ears, the wilderness to sometimes, for whatever reason, just can't get it right haven't figured out how to make it right, struggle to do the right thing, right? We all face it. Advent is kind of a mini Lent. It calls on us to pay attention to the places where we live. Doesn't mean we always get it right. We strive. So on this day, may you allow Jesus to navigate in the wilderness of your heart and the wilderness of your mind, to allow Jesus to guide you toward repentance, similar to those that left Jerusalem. It's a little bit warmer than I'm used to, isn't it? This is like the strangest December we've had in a while. The fact that I could come come away with wearing what I'm wearing and not wearing something a little warmer, it's like amazing. But I think about no matter how the season goes, no matter how cold or how hot it is, that all of us are confronted eventually by a little child. Eventually by a little child that will lead us to make a a difference to understand that the grace and love of Jesus Christ happens in a manger still a few weeks away right and yet the call is as we take our time as we quiet ourselves as we remember what God started in our baptism that you'll find God's peace God's love in Jesus Christ. You'll find in your own wilderness of your mind and your heart, Jesus who knows how to navigate who you are, where you come from, what gets you to wake up, what allows you to journey into this grace. And may you find it, much as Christ has always found you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Lord, in your mercy, loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems that, so that all creation can declare your praise. Lord, in your mercy, steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. When people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness ray down from above. Lord, in your mercy, Le leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth, make even the disparities between your people, sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities, accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all, teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Lord, in your mercy. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregations who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, tend those who are sick or struggling with depression, and gather all people in your healing embrace. We pray for those that have been hospitalized, Jason Remfer and John Schrader, also Marvin Huber, Jim Nyberg, Marilyn Nyberg, Eugenia Ribby, and Jean Schultz. Joy Sanders, be with these. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. We especially uh, pray for the families of Mark Eide, for the family of Ralph Schwartz, father of Richard Schwartz. Be with all of these, Lord, in your mercy. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. All are welcome to the table.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice in this bread and cup you give, that you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.